hey, it's jug lines from the automator. And um, in the next piece here, you're going to see uh, Isaiah, is my employee working here at the automator with me, um, we were discussing something and I realized it, it sounded like it was going to be interesting. So I decided to go ahead and start recording. So we're going to jump to it, but um, we didn't really have like an intro because I wasn't sure if we were going to use it. So I thought I would uh, go ahead and give you a little bridge here. So help you understand. We were talking about doing win HTTP request um, with the com object in auto hotkey. And then he mentioned this other object, which um, I don't want to spoil the uh, surprise because it's kind of interesting. Uh, it, it The whole thing though, to me was a good learning experience because I didn't realize uh, the, the, some of the stuff that the win HTTP request is, is really kind of for a server, not for like a desktop program. Um, and the expectations that come with it. Uh, and then uh, there's just some, the other one that we cover was interesting. Um, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, and sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already. Cheers. This is okay. actually um, two types of objects that you use. Right. Okay. So we are used to using the win HTTP request object. The reason for this is that this is actually a com object that we can access with the scripting language. Yeah. Now, um, it is very likely, highly likely, that um, the browser is not using this com object because this is this com object, the win, win HTTP request, is not supposed to be used by client applications. This is actually supposed to be used by server side applications. Mm -hmm. If you actually go here, they mm -hmm. actually tell you the cool. difference between win inet and the win HTTP. Oh now, wow! Okay. Right, so WinINET is the one that you actually use for client applications. And the WinINET actually has a section in which you tell the object, the WinINET object, to, I don't want to handle encoding and decoding. Actually, I want the server to do that. And you set a header that says, I want the server to encode that for me, okay? Or decode. Actually, your app must be able to encode and decode anyways, but you can actually set a header and send it to the to the server. The browser very likely uses this object instead of win HTTP request. So I think this request, I could actually just go ahead and remove it because I, I, I will not use it. This actually, with the HTTP request, I actually have to manually handle the zip files and the encoding because I cannot handle it as the WinINet um, object. Um, according to what I was actually reading regarding that a long time ago, I don't know if they actually updated it or whatever, but actually <clears> the <throat> decompress, oh, there it is. So they, they actually allow you to decompress files, you see? Mm -hmm. This is for file and, uh, decompressing and so, but for encoding, I think that the encoding, content encoding, um, yeah, so you can, you the application can request that the server returns the responses right. in encoded format or, de or decoded. So it can be in, in plain text files or it. Now you have to know how that actually works with that object because the HTTP request, the other object doesn't do that. They, they don't work with that. The HTTP request is a server side object and you should do all the handling of those kind of things yourself, you see? Um, another thing that that actually doesn't work with is for example, this credential prompting. It actually, you see, you have noticed that um, on our hot key, you actually have to use an Internet Explorer object to get the window to ask you for the login and password. So for example, if you send a login request to LinkedIn with, and you want to, the user to input his, his username and password, you actually have to create an Internet Explorer object for that. With a win HTTP request, you don't get a window to enter your username and password. You remember, you know that, right? That's because the win HTTP request does not handle sure. credential prompting. The win inet object, right, right. Yeah. right. So yeah. the win inet object does. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. But from Windows, from from Auto Hot Key, you cannot access the win inet object because it is not a com object. That is actually okay. that is actually a header that you would have to insert into your application. That's what Ooh. happens. Okay. So basically. Wow. Um, 
our hard key is limited to the win http request and that says that you have to handle the prompting yourself well, you cannot yeah right? but it's not it's not limited to it entirely right because there's the xml http request right so th th that you would need another object that actually gives you that capability but if you use win http request no you can't because win http request does not have that particular uh capability yeah I, i'm just happens. saying there's uh, right. other objects but um and right, right, that right. one it borrows the the ie cookies right 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 and so you don't have to worry about the prompting because if you already with the router i think borrows. right in this case i think setting this header here might not help me in anything because it it, it would actually what what was that all about did i add anything no on line 27. Oh, yeah. Huh. I just removed something. That's exactly. what happened. Yeah. So status. <clears throat> so the status is actually working fine, I think. That's a 200. Yeah. Now but if I get the response the... text, I don't know if that would actually... Oh, there it is. You see? So, so, so basically, me setting up that header, that's the reason why I told was, you. Yeah. That header is actually working when you go ahead and take a look at it on the win in it object okay. which is the I, I one that the browser yeah. is using right yeah but here that i don't need it right you see well now, it, it, it just incidentally in case we do share this I, I know like i said you could probably have like the gzip on i think it's right. a deflate that doesn't that kills it and you get back this weirdness and i was talking um, to Pink one time i'm like i don't understand what the hell's going I'm on i'm not sure i think let me go ahead and take a look at that as I usually do not use this header. Right, so uh, we can response <laughs> body. Right, because I just hit... Um, body or text? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I usually use the body itself text. Right, so again, maybe deflate. Let's put the DR here. Right, and is the gzip looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, br. Oh, I think this one crashed. Yeah. That has happened two times already. Mm. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Oh, there it is. Oh, that sure. the file is very... So the gzip, that's uh, for unzipping and unzipping files. Uh-huh. It seems to me that that's the one that I that is kind of like not being accepted, right? Um, and, and the clarify through the is, HTTP request object. Yeah. So, you know? and I never thought it through, but in this, because it's a header, right? You're right. Not, it is just a you're header. not encoding your thing this way. You are telling that server when you send it back to me to, to be encoded. That yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. okay. Cool. Now, as it is zipped, right? So I'm telling it to zip it. My I received probably a zip file. That's maybe what is going on. Like the the the, the whole information is being zipped in a way. It's now, yeah. my my application here should decompress that, and I'm not doing that. That's the reason why I'm getting this uh, garbage response text. But on the one. browser, yeah. but the browser, as it is using a different object that actually does that, or maybe the browser itself is actually <laughs> kind of like deflating or unzipping the file and showing it to you maybe that's the reason why um it works fine in there but again i the the file that i'm actually receiving whatever i'm receiving that's what um i'm not so sure um how i'm gonna handle it all right thanks for watching that clip um i'm gonna try and do more of these like a weekly call with isaiah's because He's, he's far more advanced than I am, and it's wonderful to have someone that I can ask questions to. And Because I, I know if I'm asking the questions, I'm sure a lot of you guys have the same questions. Um, there's a lot of stuff you read in the forum, but they don't explain the ins and outs of it, right? And that's where having an expert you can talk to uh, is a great way to, to learn stuff, uh, which, which reminds me, sign up for the mentorship. So go to mentorship.com the-automator.com sign up to, to both get a mentor and be a mentor and those of you who already did i actually worked on the the data last week um getting ready to match up people it's uh it's still a tedious process but i'm, I'm getting there and i'm sorry i apologize for not doing it sooner but we're getting there 
All right. Have a great time. And hey, happy new year. Hope we're all having a great 2021. Cheers.